Have you ever needed to create a tape stop effect like this? If so, you're in luck. In this tutorial, I reveal exactly how to create this effect using a free VST plugin, plus how to automate the effect inside DaVinci Resolve. Plus, look, take my word for it, this is a killer tutorial and you don't want to miss it. I'm David Power and this is a DaVinci Resolve Power Tip. As a side note, this tutorial focuses on DaVinci Resolve but all the techniques I cover can be used in any video editing software that supports both VST plugins and automation of VST plugin parameters. Let's get busy! Step 1. Download the Vinyl plugin. Head over to isotope.com. There's a link in the description that will bring you directly to the download page. If you already have an Isotope account, you can log in and download right away. If not, type your email address and password to create a new account. It's purely optional, but I recommend subscribing to their email list. Isotope products are great, and they only email when they have a new product announcement or a sale. When you reach the download page, copy and paste your serial number because you'll need it in a minute. But you'll also receive an email containing your serial number in case you need it in the future. Click the download button for your operating system and download the plugin to your computer. Step one, done. Step two, install Vinyl. To kick off the installation, simply click on the executable file you just downloaded and start the installer. Accept the agreement and click Next. On this screen, you're safe to install all the selected options. I know I don't need the first three, so I'll deselect them and click Next. Next, the installer will prompt you for file locations. You're generally good to accept the defaults, but make note of the directory where the 64-bit version of the plugin is installed, because you might need it in the next step. By default, on Windows platforms, the 64-bit plugin gets installed in C, Program Files, Steinberg, VST plugins, but it might be different depending on your system configuration. So it's best to take note or copy and paste the file location to make your life a little easier. Click Next and let the installer do its thing. When it's done, click Finish. The installer will check for updates and at the end, click Close. Okay, step three, confirm that DaVinci Resolve sees your new plugin. Inside Resolve, navigate to Preferences, Audio, Plugins, and check the available plugins list. If you see Vinyl listed, you're good to go. You can close the dialog and move on. If Vinyl's not listed, check the Folders list under VST Effects. If your install directory is not listed here, click Add, navigate to the directory, and click Save. Resolve will flash a message saying your changes will take effect the next time the program's restarted. So close Resolve and reopen it. Once again, go to Preferences, Audio Plugins, confirm Vinyl is on the list of available plugins, and you're good to go. That brings us to step four, authorize the plugin. The very first time you add Vinyl to a track or an audio clip inside Resolve, you'll be prompted to authorize it. This is where you'll need the serial number you copied to your clipboard back in step one. If you no longer have the serial number in your clipboard, don't sweat it. Just locate the welcome email you received from Isotope and you'll find it there. In this dialog, paste your serial number, add your name, email address, and country, and click Authorize. This dialog lets you verify your details. Assuming they're accurate, click Submit. And if everything goes smoothly, you'll see this screen. Click Finish to complete the process. Authorization is a one-time thing, so once you've completed the process, you're good to go anytime you use vinyl on this system. That brings us to the fun part of the tutorial. Step five, make some noise. Now I'm inside DaVinci Resolve's Edit tab, and I'll drag a royalty-free music track onto the timeline. This is a track I used in a travel video called Ireland, A Brief Tour, and you'll find a link to that video in the description in case you want to check it out. Here's how the music track sounds with no effects. Mm -hmm. 
It's pretty Irish sounding, right? And now let's add the tape stop effect to this track. The first step is to open the effects library pane. Navigate to audio FX, then VST effects. And from the list, click and drag isotope vinyl to the track window. Now, as a side note, it's possible to add effects at the clip level as well. And you do that by dropping the effect onto the music clip itself. However, I prefer to add these type of effects at the track level, so they apply to all clips on the track. That helps me stay organized. But try it out both ways and see what works best for you. As soon as I drop the effect onto the track, the vinyl user interface pops open. You'll notice it has faders for mechanical noise, electrical noise, dust, scratches, and dials and knobs for a series of other parameters. Generally, vinyl lets you take any audio track, and that can be music, dialogue, sound effects, or anything in between, and make it sound like it's coming from an old-fashioned radio, tape player, or phonograph. Now, our focus in this tutorial is the button labeled spin down, and that creates the tape stop effect we demonstrated earlier. But because this is such a cool plugin, here's a quick demo of some of the things you can do with vinyl. I'm going to take a second here and set these sliders, knobs, and switches to random values. And now let's hear the track. And with the effect bypassed, and with it back on again. Notice how it only took a few seconds to make this Irish music track sound like a recording from the early 1900s. Once you start playing with it, I'm certain you'll find a lot of fun and interesting uses for the vinyl plugin. However, our focus for the moment is the spin down button located right here. I'm going to play the track with no effect and then hit the spin down button. Here it goes. Now I click spin down. And off again. It's cool, right? And that's how easy it is to create a tape stop or spin down effect. But in an actual video project, you don't want to have to manually click the button when you want the effect to kick in. You want to automate it. And that brings us to step number six, automate that ish. Let's switch to the Fairlight tab. Now the first thing you might want to do is vertically stretch the audio track to make it easier to see what's going on. I'll do that by grabbing the bottom edge of the track here on the left and pulling it downward. I want to start playback from this location on the timeline. And that's good. Next we want to see the vinyl user interface. Near the top of the resolve window, click Mixer. That opens a series of faders here on the right one for each audio track in your project. My music is on track A1. And here next to the word effects, there's a tiny window containing the word isotope. Single click that window and the vinyl plugin interface opens up. I'll drag it out of the way so we can see the waveform. Let's figure out where I want the tape stop effect to kick in. I think this point in the waveform is good. So I'll place my playhead on that point zoom in and hit M on my keyboard to create a marker on the timeline. Now setting a marker is 100% optional, but it can help you keep track of points of interest in the waveform as your automation evolves. Let's quickly test this out. I'll move my playhead back a little. I'll start playback and when the playhead reaches my marker, I'll manually click the spin down button and confirm that's where I want the effect to kick in. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we know where we want to automate, so let's start automating. At the far right of the transport controls, there's an automation envelope icon. Click that so it turns red. When you do, you'll notice a series of buttons appear above the transport controls. You can ignore these for the moment. What's of interest to us is a new drop-down list that appears here at the track level. This list lets me select any parameters I want to automate. I'll open the list, select Plugins, and Isotope Vinyl. That shows me all the vinyl sliders and knobs I can automate. Just about every control on the user interface appears on this list 
as an automation option. From the bottom of the list, I'll select spin down and nothing happens. That's okay. All we've done here is set up our workspace so we can start drawing what's called an automation envelope. With our cursor in default select mode, we can click on the music track and still nothing happens. In order to create envelope points for our plugin, we need to click the select range icon here on the toolbar. And now when I click on the audio clip, a green line appears across the upper channel of the stereo audio clip. Now, because we have a green line on a green clip, it's not so easy to see. So let me quickly change the color of my audio clip. There we go. Now you can clearly see the green automation envelope. Just a quick side note on automation envelopes. Because spin down is a switch, its only valid states are on and off. So when we're in select range mode, Resolve will only let us turn the spin down switch on or off with no points in between. Going back to our music track, in addition to the green line, there's also a very small red automation envelope point from our first click. You can think of these points kind of like keyframes in as much as they determine the timing and value of an effect parameter at a point in time. When the green line is low as it is now, the spin effect switch is off. To turn it on, I'll move my cursor to the top of the clip just below my blue marker and once again click on the clip to create an automation point. And now our green line turns into a step function. I'll move my playhead closer to the marker and watch closely what happens to the spin down button on the user interface as I step through frame by frame with my cursor. When my playhead is before the step, spin down is off and as soon as my cursor reaches the step, the spin down button flips on. Let's play it back in real time. And there you go. We've just automated the tape stop effect on our music track. Great. Now let's say we want to turn the effect off again a few beats later. All I need to do is move my cursor to the point in the audio waveform where I want the effect to turn off and click low on the waveform to create another automation point. Now I have a step up on the green line, followed by a step down a few beats later. Let's see how that sounds in real time. Okay, great. But let's say you goofed and the automation point didn't end up exactly where you wanted it. Well, this is how you fix it. Let's zoom in on the waveform and you'll see a small red automation point on the green envelope. All you need to do is grab this point with your cursor, drag it left or right, and drop it where you need it to be. And now when I play the track back, That's exactly what I wanted. One final thought before we move on. What happens if you mess up and add automation points in places where you hadn't intended? Let's say I make an error, and in trying to fix it, I make the situation worse by adding a whole bunch of automation points I didn't want. Well, no sweat. This is how you fix the situation. Make sure you're in select range mode and simply drag a window across any points you want to delete. Hit backspace on your keyboard, and all those nasty points disappear and you're back to where you started. And then you can easily, once again, add points where you need them to be. And the effect will switch on and off as you intended. And that is how it's done. And now you are ever so close to being a VST automation expert. That's it for this tutorial. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. And if you dig this tutorial, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you again in the next Power Tip.